She's not only a formidable businesswoman, but she's also a school governor, a trustee, a volunteer for Futures First, and she speaks at secondary schools to inspire young women about going into business. Um, her business supports Noah's Ark Children's Hospice and World Vision. So join me in welcoming Cynthia. Um, good morning, everybody. Um, my name is Cynthia Ekinsania, as Oakley said, and um, today I'll be sharing a bit about myself, about my life in Islington, and also my experience of the voluntary sector. So just to kick off, we've just got um, an image. Can anybody recognise where this is um, sighted in Islington? Well done. So who was that? Apart <laughs> 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 from Anita. <laughs> okay, well Anita, come and see me at the lunch break and there might be a little prize for you. <laughs> okay, yeah, I walk past this every day on Caledonian Road and it's an amazing bit of graffiti and all it says is, I'm the diamond in the dirt that ain't been found, and sometimes, you know, that's a lot of us. Okay, so I moved to Islington in 1980. I was 11 years old, and I can see some of you kind of doing the maths in your head. There were no swanky shops on Upper Street, no Emirates Stadium, and there wasn't even a whiff of Starbucks or a Costa. We moved to Islington from lovely, I shouldn't say lovely, but, you know, kind of quite tranquil Westminster. And a week later, after moving in, there was a documentary on television about glue sniffers, and they happened to be in the estate that backed onto ours. My mum was terrified. In the mind of an 11-year-old, Islington didn't have much going for it at the time. So in the early 80s, Islington seemed to be famous for two things, teenage delinquents and the rise of the loony left. Yeah. <laughs> 35 years later, Islington has cleaned up or scrubbed up. We've got rid of the goose sniffers, and as for those so-called loony lefties, well, I'll leave that to sit with you. <laughs> okay, so today, I live off Caledonian Road, and most of my neighbours... Most of my neighbours are women in their 70s and 80s, and they tell me lots of stories about the neighbourhood, how things have changed, how the community has changed. Um, the one story that they told me was how they got together to drive out the prostitutes that were working and using the area. How one night they heard a punter beating up a prostitute, and how they went for him with some kitchen utensils. <laughs>
the organisation of voluntary, voluntary sector organisation took the brave step. They held the job open for me for three months while I had time to organise my childcare. That's the passion and maybe the compassion of the voluntary sector. Five years later, when my second daughter arrived, this same organisation gave me a favourable maternity leave and eased me back into work with some keeping in touch days. The voluntary sector has led the way with a number of initiatives for employees that the private sector is slowly but surely catching up with now. Before going into business, I've worked for a number of organisations and all have been in Islington, bar one. You can take the girl out of Islington, but you can't take Islington out of the girl. I've seen the sector change and evolve over the last 10 to 15 years. We've had organisations that have merged together for greater strength and sustainability. We've had projects closing because of funding being withdrawn. We've had organisations who would rather cease to exist than take funding from the government, and organisations who wouldn't exist without the funding of the government. We've had the rise of celebrity donors and supporters. We've had donation fatigue. Can we really support another disaster on the other side of the world? And we've also seen the rise and the fall of the personality who becomes way bigger than the charity itself. I've been running my cake business for 10 years now, and yes, it's one of my passions. And the other passion is to see women who have a desire to start a small business or a creative project or a charity to kind of get up and do so. So I set up It's Your Time to Flourish, where I run workshops in small groups to help women set their plans in motion to have a flourishing business or a project. These are ordinary women just making a difference. And I always encourage the women to give back in whatever way they can to keep the cycle going. So, oh sorry, just go back a slide. So on, on this slide here, we've got just at, at the end, we've got um, Bobby who makes wonderful clothing and a percentage of her um, profits she donates back to an orphanage in India. We've got, in the middle, we've got Unica and um, We've got Vadim Cameron, who is um, the daughter of Una Kerr. And Una Kerr came to this country in the 50s, and she became a nurse. And with some of her money that she earned, she used to send money back home to Jamaica. And she, it was really on her heart to um, think about the hidden poverty that goes on in Jamaica. But she wasn't really sure what to do with this vision and this, this dream. Her daughter now has set up the Una Kerr Foundation, where she um, fundraises to send money to specific projects in, in Jamaica. Um, at, the, at the sorry, the top left, we've got Cecilia. Cecilia loves to knit, so she's got her little Etsy um, business. But the other thing that she does by giving back is she makes tiny, tiny little um, pieces of knitwear, which she donates to um, premature baby units. We've got Ina Bello, who is a fantastic songstress. She wrote this simple little song called Freedom Calling and it just sat there for ages. And now it's a song that is used to campaign for the freedom of sex traffickers. Mm -hmm. So these are ordinary women, you know, that live down the road from you that are doing amazing and great things. Thank you. Um, I want to introduce you to this lady here. This is um, Felicia. And I really admire this woman, and one day I really hope to meet her. Um, Felicia lives in Liberia, and we're pretty similar. We both have baking businesses, and we both want the same things in life. We want to feed our families, we want to educate our daughters, so that they can make a difference in life, and that they can make good choices in life, so that they can also be in a position of choice with the actions and things that they take. With the assistance and the training through a voluntary organisation, Felicia is able to do this. Charity isn't always about a handout, sometimes it's about a hand up. So what would I say to some of the younger women sitting here? Think about what you can do now. Connect with the women in the room here today and connect with women within your community. Think about how you can give back now 
can you volunteer or find out about some great organisations that you can support and champion? Consider a career in this diverse, thriving and evolving sector. Okay, voluntary sector, third sector, community sector, it's got so many names but nothing's changed. It's still a, you know, a great place to work. It's a sector with passion, with a lot to give, and that's why it will continue to shape communities and change people's lives for the better. I just want to thank you for your time, and if you want to connect with me on um, Twitter, those are my details, but thank you very much for your time. <laughs>
And I think in terms of volunteers um, and in terms of people that work with you, kind of harness the energy that they come with and um, uh, kind of delegate so that it's not that the, the, the people don't end up feeling um, overwhelmed like maybe you might be feeling. Does that help us all? Thank you. Well, there we are. Thank you so much.